and welcome to this special election broadcast here on SAFM. We are live from the Emmanuel Municipal Offices. My name is Bongi Wazwane. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. A number of political parties, seven in total, have joined us for this election debate. It promises to be a riveting conversation in the next two hours between 12 and 2. Seven political parties battling it out for the heart and soul of the voters, not only in the province of Mpumalanga, but also, of course, giving us a sense of a national picture and how things are looking on that front. Their supporters are right here with us in this particular hall. So we will be having this conversations that promise to be, you know, quite a true reflection of the state of this particular province. And it's just after 12 o'clock. Welcome to the special broadcast, the election debate taking place in Omalang, the province of the Rising Sun. We are in Emalatheni, the municipal offices. Seven political parties <coughs> will be telling us why they deserve your votes, South Africa. They also have brought with them their own supporters who will be posing questions and also try to make sense of some of the manifestos that we've seen being tabled by some of the leaders. Seven political parties have joined us. I'll tell you who they are in just a moment. We'll be talking about service delivery in this province. You would have seen a number of service delivery related protests in this province. A lot of issues around water, around uh, you know sanitation, but also driving through this province just in town alone on roads streets a lot of a lot of portals it was a bit of a difficult drive i'll tell you all about that as we have this conversation but first the news with eva chipa thanks bongi we're top stories at 12. You and Durban. Good afternoon, I'm Yiba Chipan. Members of the United Nations Human Rights Council have backed a resolution calling for a weapons ban on Israel because of its conduct in the war in Gaza. 28 countries voted in favor, 6 against and 13 abstained. France abstained, describing the humanitarian situation in Gaza as catastrophic. The vote, while not binding, does, does come from the UN's top human rights body and will increase diplomatic pressure on Israel to change course. Back home, over 20 people have been injured in a crash involving two taxis in Umgeni Road in Durban. Paramedics say some All right, uh, thank you very much uh, to Eva Chipa there. She's back at uh, the top of one o'clock with the latest news. But uh, welcome to our special broadcast. This is our elections debate that is uh, taking place in the province of Mpomalanga. We're in the Emalatlina municipal offices. And uh, we do have with us seven political parties who are joining us. There were supposed to be eight in total, but um, one political party, the Better Residents Association, is not going to be participating because they signing a coalition pact with other smaller parties in the province of Limpopo. We also did extend an invitation to the MK party, but they were uh, not responsive. So we do not have a response from them, but they were invited for this conversation. So with us today is the ANC, and we have Ndumiso Mokako, who's the Mpomalanga ANC Provincial Executive Committee member. And we also have EFF um, Mahiro Sakhala who is uh, with the, in fact, the Nkangala Regional Command Team. He's with the team there, and he's also a PR counselor in the Emalathen municipality. We have Jane Sitole, who is with the Democratic Alliance in Mpumalanga, and she is the provincial leader. We have uh, the FF Plus's uh, Werner Weber, who is the provincial leader here in Mpumalanga for the Freedom Front Plus. We also have the ACDP's Pastor JJ Schultz, um, who is the provincial leader, as well as the premier candidate 
of the African Christian Democratic Party in this province. We have uh, Kiriboni Ntumba, African Transformation Movement um, Women's League National Executive Committee member. We also have uh, Dr. Mtunze Kumano, who is the provincial spokesperson of the Inkata Freedom Party here in the province of Mpumalanga. So, just to get the ball rolling, we do have some ground rules for this uh, debate, as with all other debates. So, as the political parties, you will be given two minutes each to make your opening remarks. And as you make your opening remarks, tell the voters why should they choose you as an option come May the 29th. You have two minutes. And when you reach the 30-second mark, when you have 30 seconds remaining, look out for my face and you'll be able to be getting that wind down there. As soon as the clock you know, is up, time is up, I will then cut you off and move on to the next speaker. And do note that the supporters you have come through with as well do have an opportunity at some point during the course of the debate to ask your questions. If we can keep the questions at 15 seconds each, we'll appreciate that. And let's also try to be as respectful as we possibly can. Please do note, as the listeners as well, you can take part in this debate. You can send us your voice notes, but also you can join us online. We are live on the SABC's YouTube channel. So you can also uh, join us there, but also we can pick up your comments at SAF, in fact, at SABC underscore radio, and that is under the hashtag SABC News Debate. Use the hashtag SABC News Debate. So, as we now have all the ground rules, we'll then start with the political parties, the representatives here on stage, who will be telling us why should the voters look to you for their problems, for their solutions, especially because if you think about the fact that this is a province that is facing a myriad of service delivery challenges. For example, just driving through Rhodes Street, I was greeted by so many potholes, asking myself if I'm actually in town. And I wonder then, what becomes you know, some of the thoughts of the voters who are driving around, but also experiencing some of the water issues that we've seen in this province. So I will start, in fact, with you, um, Dr. Mkumalo, for you to give us your opening remarks on why you believe you're the best option for the voters. Your two minutes starts now. Good day, uh, Bongiwe, to your listeners, as well as fellow panelists. Thank you for having us. The Inkata Freedom Party remain committed to its key core values of integrity, Ubuntu Bojo, fighting against exclusion of any South African in the social economic development and emancipation of the country. Uh, we promote self self help and self reliance in our communities and we stand for unity in diversity. Thank you. All right, uh, you didn't use up your two minutes at all. It's uh, always good to, to not to have to cut you off. So let's move on. Kiriboni Ndumba with the ATM. Thank you. Good day to the listeners and the panelists and the audience. As mentioned, my name is Kiriboni Ndumba representing ATM. Uh, as ATM, we've got only two seats at the National Assembly, which pride itself with integrity and corrupt free government. So. We subscribe to the following values, peace, Ubuntu, transformation, and servant leadership, leadership with accountability. The reason why uh, uh, South Africans should vote for us is because, we are, we, as I said, we pride ourselves with accountability. We need a government that is free of corruption. Thank you. All right. We move on then to Pastor JJ Schultz with the uh, ACDP. We say good morning to everybody. I'm Dr. JJ Scholes from the ACDP. Uh, I'd like to share with you this morning a thought. If we look at South Africa, we ask so many questions, but the question we need to ask that you can see how the ACDP is the solution to South Africa is not what isn't working, what is working in South Africa. And that leaves us a big question to ask, what can we as the ACDP do? Many people of us, or many people know the ACDP as a Christian party and we think that's where it stops. That's not where it stops. That is where it starts. We are the party that can give a solution to the problems in South Africa. As a party with a strong biblical foundation, we are standing for justice and righteousness. So what is wrong, we want to fix and we want to make it work in South Africa. The African Christian Democratic Party brings renewed hope for a great future. 
That's why we say we are the solution to these problems. We are determined to address these critical issues without fear or favor, and we are here to serve you and to help you. We have a saying that we also say, by the people, for the people, we want to help you. So let us say, we want to say here, we fully want to realize the South Africa that you deserve, a South Africa that's ripe with opportunities in which you and your family can be safe, flourish and grow. Now is the time. We're going to have one opportunity to do it, and this is probably the last election that will work. Now is the time to elect God-fearing, competent servant leaders of integrity who understand the need for good stewardship and, and of state resources and are committed to restoring trust through godly governance. We can't carry on with promises and nothing that works in this country. Dr. Schultz, your two minutes is up. Let's move on then to the Freedom <coughs> Front Plus's Werner Weber. The Freedom Front Plus champions the cause of the minorities in South Africa. We also have a Christian point of departure. We believe in constructive engagement. If we criticize, we want to do it in a constructive way. We want to rebuild South Africa because South Africa, especially our province, is falling apart completely. We've got to rebuild South Africa and this province. But we can't do it with the policies of the ANC. We are talking about service delivery. The municipalities in our province and in our country are supposed to be service providers. They must do what individuals can't do. But that has changed completely since 1994. They are not service providers anymore. They are job providers. They provide jobs for people uh, in the municipalities where the municipalities are completely overstaffed. They are completely overpaid. And uh, let's just take an example. I was uh, a counselor in Herzebande. We had 66 employees. There are 357 employees now doing the job that 66 people were doing. Their average salary, I'm informed, is 50,000 rand a month. That proves my point. These people are not appointed to, de to uh, deliver service. They are appointed to have jobs. They are appointed to get uh, so much money that they be become rich in only one term. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right, I will give you a chance at the end of these opening remarks to clap hands for all the candidates here, but let's quickly move on then to Jane Satori, the Democratic Alliance. Thank you very much and good afternoon to the viewers at home. As the Democratic Alliance, our offer is clear. If the money meant for the people actually goes to the people, we will be able to go a long way in delivering services. We need to end CADA deployment. The DA will crush CADA deployment, where people are employed on merit and they are employed because they can do the job and they qualify. This thing of jobs for friends and families and for pals has killed our public service and the DA will restore it. The DA will uplift six million people out of poverty. To the contrary, the DA will increase the social grant as we see it today. The DA has submitted several proposals in the National Assembly in terms of increasing the social grant, which was rejected by the ruling party. So to uplift people out of poverty, you need to also create employment. The DA will create two million jobs where the DA govern. It has been proven that more jobs are created because we are fortunate to be governing somewhere where we are able to create those jobs jobs and statistics are showing and independent research has shown that where the DA governs uh, investment flock there because they know that they don't have to give their profits to somebody else that will put it in their pocket that profit will go to them for their hard work and that helps in creating employment in those areas where the DA is governing. The DA will end load shedding. Load shedding is a man-made product of the ruling party and the DA will end it so that Residents can have water, residents can have electricity, and I think that is where the crux of the matter is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. I will, give you, I will give you a chance to clap for all your candidates just now. If we can just try just to hold it, we're almost, almost at the finish line. Mahiro um, Sakhala, EFF. 
Uh, thank you, Bunkiwe. Greetings to everyone. Greetings to members of the panelists. Uh, Bunkiwe, our sister EFF is clear. We want to urge all the South Africans that are eligible to vote on the 29th of May to go out all to go out all out in their numbers to vote for the EFF. The EFF government is going to end load shedding. The EFF government is going to create jobs. The EFF government is going to give our people land. The EFF government, the vote for the EFF is the vote for free quality and decolonous education. The vote for the EFF is for vote for quality health care for everyone. The vote for EFF is the vote for provision of water for all people of South Africa. The vote for the EFF is the vote for to make sure that we have 24 hour clinics in all our wards. The vote for the EFF is the vote for to end load shedding, to end corruption in the municipalities to end nepotism and maladministration. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, move on quickly then to the ANC's Ndumiso Mokako. Uh, thank you very much, Bongiwe. Greetings to yourself and uh, the listeners of SAFM. Uh, Bongiwe, we thank you for having the ANC here today to most uh, importantly come account for the work we've been doing in making South Africa a better place to live in as confirmed by Statistics South Africa last year. Most importantly, to also communicate the challenges that we are facing in delivering services and making South Africa a better place. And lastly, it is extremely important for us to be part of this engagement with the voters uh, in this hall and outside of this hall, because we want to strip naked the false narrative uh, by adventurists like the EFF, and apartheid apologies like the DA and the Freedom Front Plus that the aim that nothing has happened in this country since 1994. Those who are not allergic to the exercise of reading and doing some research will know that Statistics South Africa that was reduced, that was issued last year as a result of the census of 2022 does reveal that South Africa is a better place to live in today because there's been increase to access to basic services like water, electricity, there's been increases to health outcomes like education, there's been increase to health outcomes like health. So you would understand uh, Bongiwe, these things will happen if you base your theories on things that only exist, exist in your head and not on facts. But the facts do reveal that the ANC has done a lot to create a better life for all. Is the time if you want to clap for your candidates and they made you proud go ahead um, and that goes for all political parties not just the ANC we will take a short break and when we come back we end time to the debate now so don't feel restricted if you feel now as we enter this part because we wanted to give them a chance to make their opening remarks but if you feel that your candidate is representing you well and what they, they are saying resonates with you do clap your hands do engage let's now get into the mood of the debate but only after the break aston villa have found comfort on the top half and they want maximum points to retain their decent position to cause havoc and deprive the villains by registering an away victory. We saw it! Clyde won in the first half, he's finished it in the second, and Brentford have turned this round. This is the Premier League! Catch the exciting clash between Aston Villa FC and Brentford FC on Saturday 6 April at 3 p.m. Live on SABC3, also available on SABC Plus.
Lateli, municipal officers uh, for this special elections debate as we speak to seven political parties. Uh, just a reminder, we did reach out to the Better Residents Association, that is the BRA, and unfortunately they could no longer make it as they're now signing an agreement with other smaller political parties in Limpopo. We also had extended an invitation to the MK party and we are still awaiting a response. So we do have seven political parties in total for this conversation. So, Mahiro, let me come to you. The ANC says that uh, they are here to account for the, and I'm quoting, work they've been doing to make South Africa a better place for all. Uh, thank you once more, Boingiwe. The ANC has been fully lying to our people for the past eight years. ANC has done nothing to the people of South Africa. ANC has done nothing to the people of Mpumalanga. ANC has done nothing to the people of Himalaya. In fact, the ANC... The ANC government has, has, has regressed the gains of democracy. The people of Mpumalanga today are suffering because of the ANC government. The healthcare system in Mpumalanga has collapsed. There are no medication in the clinics. People are being told to go home and buy their own medication. The people of Clarnet and Nova, they were given RTP houses by the ANC-led government. There are no proper roads. There's no electricity. There no, there's no clinic. The people of Mpumalanga, Emalashi, and Mpumelelele, they are being treated like animals. And so, I, I wonder then, before I even move on to another political party, how do you do things differently than as the EFF? As the EFF, we are going to do things differently. This is how we are going to make sure that we deliver services. Let's just start with fixing the potholes. How do you do it? EFF, we are going to fix potholes by making sure that we create a state-owned company that is going to be responsible for the roads. We are also going to create a state-owned company that is going to be responsible for housing. Do you get rid housing. of Sandra? Do you get rid of Sandra? No, we are not going to get rid of Sandra. I'm talking about the the roads, the port, most of the potholes in Malachi, they are in the, lo in the local townships, they are yes. not on the national roads, okay. where Sandra is responsible for. Mm. All right, let's then come to you, uh, Ndumiso, because one of the things that you are saying is that you are here to account, and you say people who are saying you've done nothing have not engaged with what Stats SA has said, but, but, Mpumalanga continues to face a myriad of service delivery challenges. Would you admit, though, that as much as you say, in your view, progress has been made, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, especially if I have to come into a municipal building and find that the parking resembles a dumping spot? No, thank you very much, Bongi. I think we must also we must start by correcting. That is not my view. It is researched facts and empirical evidence. Unless you are contesting states as a and if that is the case, I challenge you to produce your report. All right. Now let me move forward. Me, me allow me, me a chance. Give me a second. Allow me a chance. Give don't, me a second. Don't interrupt me. I will allow you. I would trust me, I will allow you. Give me a second. So are you saying that it, it is a lie? right now that in February 2024 the Human Rights Commission releases its investigative inquiry report into 17 local municipalities and three district municipalities in Pumalanga finding that some of these municipalities are failing to provide water address the issue of chronic sewage spillages and have huge escapades. Not at all that's why when I made my introductory statement I said that we are going to frankly communicate the challenges we are facing and part of what we have mentioned constitute those challenges. Let me help you. If, because we are going to have a problem if we are going to have a debate that is not founded on science and how the world characterizes development. By now you would know that there's something called the Human Development Index which measures how societies progress globally. And in the case of that, they look mainly at health education and the economy and, the, and maybe fourthly access to basic services. In the case of the province of Mpumala, I can tell you now that in, 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 in 1994 or 1995, very few African people had access to education and today that has improved. Between, between the ages of 7 and 17, 98% of our people are in school. In terms of the life expectancy in South Africa, in terms of the life expectancy in South Africa, we have improved as a province, we are now at 
These are some of the facts that constitute the progress we've made. If you look at the economy of the province, when we took over in 1994, we were running an economy of about 40-something uh, billion. Today we're at about 530 billion. And in that 530 billion, you would know that States SA told us that the economy of Mpumalang is the fourth largest in the country behind very big provinces which are Gauteng, Western Cape and KZN. That is how the progress we've registered. So, for us to come and discuss things that exist in people's heads and are not supported by any scientific evidence we are going to have a problem. Now let me come back to your matter, Bongi. I did say to you that there are people without water and that is why we are speaking of 87% access to water. That is significant progress from the 41% of Africans that had water in 1995. We are speaking of people with electricity. We are speaking of access to electricity. When we took over, it is only 32% of Africans that had access to electricity as a source of energy while we had 99% white. And today, we are standing at 97%. So for me, that is significant progress, despite the fact that there are challenges. And if you understand properly development, it's a very complex process. Uh, and that complex process will have challenges along the way. I don't want it to be a dialogue between the two of us. So I'm going to give the others a chance yes, to join right. because I do have some questions at the back of what you've just said as well. Jane Dumiso says development is measured differently. We do know the index. We do know how you measure development. But I wonder, before we even get into some of what he said, what are your impressions then with how the ANC views the development in the province of Mpumalanga? You know what? What I like is the fact that he is saying we cannot compete with independent research. As we are quoting recent statistics and recent happenings in this province. You know, you cannot live in a province where eight people get murdered every day and tell us you are making progress. You cannot live in a, pro you cannot live in a province where mothers are going to Go ahead, go ahead. You cannot live in a province where mothers go to hospitals and they come out without their babies because there is no enough medication for them to keep their babies. The maternal mortality rate is high and you cannot live in a municipality where people don't have water for 41 days and tell us that you are making progress. You cannot live a municipality. All right, let's let let's try to give her let's try to give her a chance to respond. Uh, if I can ask the if I can ask the the African National Congress supporters as well to just allow her a chance to respond as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bongiwe. You cannot live in a province that is losing twenty seven thousand learners in two years from dropout and tell us that you're providing a uh, proper education. You cannot live in a province where learners in grade four can read for meaning and tell us that you're providing quality education. All right. The, the African National Congress has taken this province backwards. Okay. They have taken this province backwards and they have taken this country backwards. All the things that they are saying, unless you leave logic at home when you come to this debate, then you will tell us that you are doing wonderfully well. But if you follow logic, if you live in this province, if you live in this municipality as I do, you know that there are people, there are learners who can't go to school because they can't bath, there's no water. There are people who can't take their own medication because there is no water. All right, Jane, I'm going to come back to you. Um, and I'm sure Dumiso is noting a lot of what is being said as well. Verna, for you. All right, if I can just request, may I just request that in all that we do, May we not have racial slurs. May we not have racial slurs. If I can just request that we are respectful as much as we possibly can, and we just avoid racial slurs, please. Thank you. Verna, you can go ahead. Uh, and gentlemen, I would like uh, you to please listen to me. I'm so going to say something very controversial. I'm going to say something very controversial, but I, I will explain why I say it. I want to give credit to the ANC. They have done good things. The problem we have 
The problem that the ANC and the government has is it is not sustainable. You are running out of cash. You will not be able to do this, to afford what you're doing in the years to come. What are you going to do if you want to pay grants to the people? And the bank manager says, I'm not going to allow that payment. I am going to say decline. What are you going to do? Imagine the chaos in South Africa. You want to have a, a, a health insurance system here. What are you going to do if you can't afford it anymore? Because you are running out of cash. The government is, is at the point of bankruptcy. The debt in South Africa is 80% of GDP. You can't do this. You are going to run out of cash. You are running this country into bankruptcy. We must stop this. We must vote against the ANC to get sensible people into this government. We must get sensible people who can run this country on a sustainable basis because the ANC is, 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 the ANC is running this country into bankruptcy. We can't afford the ANC any further. And Dr. Schultz, let me come to you. I mean, when you look at the investigation by the South African Human Rights Commission, part of what it finds is that in the Tembisilahani local municipality, they found that water was commodified and sold to residents, violating their constitutional rights to access. And waste management is not prioritized as well. The municipality fails to collect refuse as per the known schedules. Illegal dumping sites thrive as a result of non-collection of, of refuse and violation of residents to a clean environment. And the municipality was directed to provide a minimum quantity of potable water of 25 liters per person. Should your party be voted in, what will you do differently here to try and deal with some of the issues of water in the province? Thank you, Program Director. I think what is very important that we need to realize, and I would like to answer my question, or that is posed to me in a way that everybody can understand. You know, when a person opens a business, you open a business for one reason, and that is to make profit. If a business does not make profit, you close it down, and you do something else. The problem that we sit with you know, every time the business dot does not make a profit, we make promises, we make promises, and we never pay up on our promises. Now, if we look, the Greater South Africa and the government that we have also runs on a business proposal or a business principle. It is not making money, it is not succeeding, and it is not showing a profit. That is why I stated with my opening remarks the question should be posed, what is working? There's so much that is not working, we should rather change the question to, what is working? Now, to answer our program's director's question, what would I do? I would change the jockey. If the ANC for 30 years could not solve the problem, how are they going to do it now with promises that doesn't work? It is time for change. It is time for change. What will we do? From the top to the bottom, let me tell you what has happened. I am a councillor myself. May I please respond, let's, please? Let's, let's give him a chance to respond. I myself am a councillor, and I can explain the situation to you what is happening. If we look in our province where I come from, the part of Musuka Likwa, 30 years ago there were 60,000 people in Musuka Likwa. Now there is 180,000 people, but the infrastructure has never been updated. The finances as in the resources have never properly invested into the infrastructure to cope with 180,000 people. That is why we have the water problems. That is why we have the sanitation problems, because the money is not utilized in the direct proportion in which it should be. So that is something we would correct with immediate effect from the top down, put honorable people there that can do the work and do it properly and give service delivery. That is why the ACDP stands for. Okay. We stand for service, 
We stand for order and we stand for safety. So that is what we would do. We would revamp the whole system and give service to the community and make it happen with immediate effect. Right. That is why the ACDP needs your vote. Okay, thank th you, Program Director. Thank you. So if I can just ask the supporters of the different political parties, so if you have questions, do raise your hand. We'll get the mic to you. That time is coming very closely. There's a hand here in front as well. So let me come to you then, um, Kiriboni. One of the things that we, we also see is is the report and I'm, right now I'm staying with this report of the Human Rights Commission. I'll go to other issues in just a moment but the, th there's an issue of chronic sewage spillage in the Lekwa local municipality. That is what was discovered <coughs> by this particular report and it poses obviously health and safety issues for a number of people. What do you do differently as the ATM to ensure that the people of Lekwa local municipality don't deal with this? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bongiwe. What we'll do differently as the ATM is to ensure that we, we, we employ, currently we've got graduates who are staying at home, who are qualified for... Go ahead, go ahead. We, we've got, as I'm saying, we've got graduates who are staying at home, who are not employing, employed to do the job. So what we will be doing, we'll ensure that we get them, we give them the skills that is required by ensuring that we train them so that they are able to, 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 to go, as you are saying, like in Ligua. Fortunately, I'm, I'm from Iligua. We'll ensure that we take them and ensure that we give them the skills that is required so that they can deal with the issues that we've got currently at Iligua. So that will, will also reduce the, the issue of unemployment that we've got in our country. We've got a, a, a lot of uh, people who are unemployment, un unemployed. So the only way to deal with unemployment is to ensure that we take all, everyone, especially in the issue, as we are saying, in the issue of health, which it, 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 it's, it's something that uh, uh, it, it encounters every person that is living in the country. Health is a risk to every one of us, so we, we should ensure that we, we, we take it up so, so that everyone gets the better uh, service to that. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, take a break. When we come back, we'll continue then this conversation. And I'm keen to hear from you, the IFP, when you look at the numbers of the province of Mpomalanga, 1994, for example, the population of mere 3.3 million um, people in 2024, home to 5.1 million people how do you better their lives particularly in terms of job creation we come back with an answer from you but first let's start and go to a quick ad break unforgettable happens when the young and the old
little bit, if I can ask that we settle down. Just a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. If I can just ask that we settle down just a little bit as we continue with that debate, because we're now going to be taking some questions as well from the floor. But um, before we do that, uh, Dr. Kumalo, um, one of the things that is very clear is that the population has increased and uh, you do now have a number of people who are in search of employment. We just heard from the ATF as well on what they plan to do in order to try and uh, you know, also make sure that they do create some jobs for unemployed graduates on their part. And during the, her state of the province address, for example, the Premier saying that in 1996, there were around 627,000 people employed in the province. And she says that the economy now employs more than 1.25 million people. That is the Premier of the province. But I wonder what becomes the IFP's plan to create more employment. We can do that in many five points. The first one is the infrastructure development and maintenance. We will maintain the roads, the water infrastructure, and the electricity. And Bumalanga is very rich in agriculture and tourism. So we will, we will give a lead to our, our people. And then, number three, Bumalanga is very rich in coal mining. And we are, we are, we are having three of the biggest power stations in the southern hemisphere so what you need to do is to skill the people is to train the youth so that they, they can util, they can utilize uh, what we have in Pumala. Yeah. number four we have, we have to industrialize south africa so that you can develop the economy of this country so to get the country working let's industrialize the country train the students give people work, give people employment within their sectors within their uh, population where they are staying number five the most problem in Pumalanga is crime and corruption. So if you have not dealt with crime and corruption, you will not get anywhere with servicing the people. Just now in a news bulletin, man, you heard that the health work, healthcare workers in Temba Hospital have down their tools because, because they, were, they were attacked by criminals. Now the patients have not been attended for, for plus minus five days and nothing has happened. This is the daily break of Pumalanga. People are killed and nothing is happening. All right, thank you very much, um, Dr. Mutunze Kumalu, the spokesperson of the IFP in the province of Mpumalanga. So let's take some of the questions from the floor. Let's get the mic then to as many people as we possibly can. Who's the first one? Thank you. I'm here with a member of the Democratic Alliance. I'll start here and we'll take it from mine. Uh, I need you to move there, Bala. My question is directed to the DA leader. Will the DA take away the social grant from the people? All right, Jane. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as a matter of fact, the DA has been submitting proposals to increase the social grant, both for the elderly and the, to uplift people out of poverty. The DA has submitted a solid plan, and even now, we will increase it to 760 rand. When the DA says something, it is costed for, uh, uh, for, for, the, for the little ones. For, yes, yeah. And we will also extend it to pregnant mothers. The DA's plan and it's in the DA's manifesto. Yes, yes we will extend it to pregnant mothers and also to uplift people out of poverty. There is severe levels of poverty in our country and we cannot ignore that. A lot of, there is more than 4,000 people in this province that go to bed hungry every night. So we need to uplift people out of poverty. All right. And we need to understand that social grants are a way of lifting people out of poverty until we are able to create the much needed jobs that people can actually be able to help themselves. All right, let's move on to the next question. Tembanduli. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Tembanduli and I would like to ask uh, our true leader, Dumiso Bukakov, saying, what is our government doing to support young people to access opportunities? Thank you. All right, Dumiso. No, thank you very much. Uh, I think there's a number of initiatives that the NC uh, led government, in particular in Pumalanga, is doing to support young people. One of them, I will start with the Premier's uh, Youth Fund, which is a fund the Premier under the ANC led government has designed to support young people that are in business. And every year, in, when she gives the state of the province address, does give account of the beneficiaries 
and uh, what they are doing in the different sectors of the economy. There are also a number of bursaries because we know that the issue of education is extremely important, which we provide to different young people in the country. We have had those we have sent to Russia, we have had those we have sent to Cuba. Some did have problems, but ultimately they stayed and came back. So we do offer that. We also do have a number of learnerships that we offer across uh, different state institutions in the province. But the major problem here is that uh, private capital or the private sector does not come to the party to work with government in many instances, which is extremely important. But there are a number of things which were raised here, Bongo. I don't know if you'll want me to comment on them now or wait for the questions. I must hold those thoughts. Yeah, let's just we'll get as many questions as we possibly can. All right, the next question. Thank you, it's Paul Weber that's speaking. Um, on the statistics, uh, if you look at the World Bank statistics from... Uh, Pardon me, sir, Who's, who are you directing the question to? Uh, I'm directing the question to the Freedom Front. Okay. Um, according to the statistics from the World Bank from 1994, it was 23%, it lowered down to 2010 uh, to about 20%, but since then it skyrocketed to 32%. So the unemployment has gone worse from 1994. Uh, on the Freedom Front, uh, the question was on regarding to this, where is the balance between socialism and capitalism? Some members ask for more social grants, increasing socialism in South Africa. What is needed in South Africa? All right. Thank you very much. Werner? I want to explain this. The well-being of our people in our province is of more importance than the well-being of political parties. When I came into the legislature five years ago, I said to the Premier, I want you to succeed. I want you to succeed. But if you can only succeed if you copy the policies of the winning nations. If you do that, that the winning nations are do the, uh, the nations that prosper. <clears throat> that winning nations do not, uh, that the governments in the winning nations do not have as its core uh, uh, value to create jobs. They leave job creation to the private enterprise. That's the difference here. We are talking about that government should create jobs. We must leave, must leave it to private enterprise so that we can be as prosperous as the winning nations are. We are doing the opposite. When I gave this advice to the Premier in Pumalonga, she did exactly the opposite. She is employing socialist tendencies. She is employing socialist values. Socialism is the philosophy of failure. Capitalism, capitalism is the philosophy of prosperity. All right, um, before, before I come back to the floor, let me give this question to you, uh, Mahiro. Um, one of our listeners, JC Kaunda, saying, since crime has become a way of life in Mzanti, what a political party is going to do to arrest this grave matter? What's the EFF going to do? Thank you very much once more, Boingiwe. Uh, as the EFF, we are going to make sure that when we take government on the 29th of May, we are going to make sure that all the police officers are going to attend the courses to make sure that they attend to the crime. And we are going to make sure that on each and every ward or on the township, we have the satellite police station to combat crime. And to make sure that we do not deploy people just because they are members of the governing or the ruling parties. We are going to deploy people based on the experience and the qualification. Thank you. All right, so let's move on then and get another question from the floor. Let's get another question from the floor. Thank you, Bokki. We have got the economic freedom fighters. All right, let's get another question. Uh, thank you. My question is directed to uh, EFF uh, fighter, my hero. Uh, when EFF said you will create a job, how are you going to do? EFF to create that job for the people. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mahiro. Thank you very much, Monkey, once more. As the EFF, I think our manifesto is very clear in terms of job creation. As the EFF, we are going to create what we call the creation of government and state capacity. That will lead the abolishment of tenders. Therefore, we are going to create a state-owned housing and road company. 
that is going to lead to creation of 4 million jobs. We are not going to have the EPWs anymore under the EFF government. All the EPWs that are working on short-term basis, we are going to make sure that we terminate our contract and they reapply for the permanent jobs in the municipality. And we are not going to hire people based on the membership of the political party that belongs to. Under the road and housing company, we are going to create 4 million jobs within one year in government as the EFF. Thank you. All right, another question from the floor, please. Let's get another question from the floor. Let's get a different political party. Thanks, Bunker. We have got the IFP on All the right. floor. Thank you. All right, let's get your question, sir. Yes. Uh, my is yes, directed to the to IFP. Um, uh, since, uh, since we all understand that uh, we have the issue of your shape, uh, since the president has been in power, in power for almost is to, almost a, a term uh, we have a problem uh, i want to understand uh, can i ask uh, that you put the I mic want to, on i want to understand how the I, the ifp is going to end load shedding and also i want to understand how are you going to handle uh, the issue of health because uh, all hospitals are full and all clinics you'll find that there are no medication and all that so all right. those are my two questions thank, thank you, you dr kumalo thank you man. Uh, firstly, load shedding is man-made. It is a result of corruption, uh, cadre development, and the failure to maintain infrastructure. So the first thing we will do as the IFP, we will get rid of corruption. Those people who are responsible for corruption, we have to be detained and taken uh, steps forward. The second thing, with the increase of the population, we will also look at other forms of energy. We will look at the forms of energy, the solar, we can look for at, at, at the solar, we can look at, at the wind, at the hydropower and the ocean power. We can look at the plant to, for production of electricity and then we will maintain... It. Are those not part though of what government has put in place now? I can hear you, man. Are those not part of the energy action plan right now? Yeah, it's still part of it, but it's not been implemented. We are going to implement that. And, but the first thing about load shedding that it is man-made. So we we'll, we'll kept load shedding by arresting all those factors which are, correspond, which are leading to corruption. Right. And then when it comes to health, the problem, the problem of health, here in Pumalanga, we don't have a tertiary hospital. The government of Pumalanga spend a lot of money transporting patients from Pumalanga to Houting. And, and secondly, there was a plan that was given to, that was, that was given to the government of Mpumalanga to, to create a tertiary hospital. But the Premier just said that the Namalaj Hospital is still in the, in, in the planning process. The second thing is to empower primary health care services. Each and every ward must have a clinic, a fully functioning clinic. And then you must also train healthcare professionals. You must, they must be well paid and then you must, take, you must, take sure, must, must make sure that they are safe. Like I've just highlighted the issue of Timber Hospital. And the, the thing we have got at the moment, they are saying that there the, the are no doctors in the hospital. But as, right now, as I'm, as I'm sitting here, there are about hundreds of doctors who are unemployed, South African doctors. Yet we still have foreign doctors that are working in this country. So the problem is not, it's man made. You know, all okay. things we are sitting here we're discussing is because of corruption, it's because of the government failing to take actions against people who are responsible for such a decay of the country. All right, I'm going to come back to the floor in just a moment. You so you wanted to respond. Uh, but I must say that maybe it's quite unfair for us to come and engage with people who do not have an appreciation of basic documents like the integrated resource plan. You've just said here yourself that uh, the energy mix in the country does include solar, hydro and others. So for political parties to come and present is as something that is new here. It's just a waste of time. But nevertheless, I wanted to deal with a number of issues which were raised in the first round. The first one is the issue of crime. It is quite not true that crime is an exclusive problem of Mpumala. It is not, crime is not only where the ANC governs. Recent reports do inform us that Cape Town is the 10th most dangerous city in the world. And it's not a problem of the DA. It is a problem that could also be linked to our socio-economic conditions in the country. We need a comprehensive strategy with partners 
both communities and the police but in the fight against crime. But so all that is good and well. Your the police minister is an ANC deployee. Yes. Is so that, are you saying he's failing? No, no, crime is a trouble. Yes, we do have challenges in the fight against crime. And I'm saying it is a societal problem that cannot be resolved by an individual or a particular political party if we do not, form, if we do not form partnership with the people. So you are see? you saying the ANC is failing no, 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 no. to have failing. an integrated approach to crime? Is that what I'm hearing you say? No, 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 no not at what all. Not saying? at all. You might listen. Take your, give yourself some time to listen. The reason is, listen, I'm trying to rush because yes. we're getting to the no, news. No, no, it's extremely, I can wait and yeah. come back after the news rather than I giving think, I think half let's come back. answers. Yes, I because think it's important for you to listen with the aim of comprehending but not to respond. I'm, Very definite, I'm definitely comprehending what you're saying and as much as I do listen. But what is also important is you also have to appreciate that there would be responses to what you're saying because we're comprehending. Very important. And there's a lot of questions because yes. if you're saying that, for example, that this is a problem that is societal, it needs an integrated approach, the natural question would be, are you saying that your deployees are failing to have this integrated approach? And I want you to pick that up yeah, when we come back from no, the news like so that you're able to give us a sense as to where do you think then the failures become? Because that is an important conversation to have 30 years on but let's continue then with this particular debate on the other side of one o'clock Eva Chipa is standing by to bring us the latest in the news
All right, we are still coming to you live from the Emalacheni Municipal Offices here in Mpumalanga. We continue then with our special broadcast, our election debate. It's the final hour of this election debate. We have seven political parties who are represented here. That is the ANC, the EFF, the DA, the FF+, ACTP, ATM, as well as the IFP. A reminder, the uh, BRA, which is the Better Residents Association, um, is not with us. They, in fact, are signing a coalition pact with other smaller parties in Limpopo, so they were not able to be here. The MK party was invited to be part of this conversation, um, but we did not hear back from that political party. So if we can ask that we settle down in order for us to be able then to pick up this discussion. Uh, if, if I can ask that we settle down, uh, the IFP, please, thank you. Um, if we can settle down as we continue then with this particular debate. Um, Dumi, so one of the things that you were telling us is, is the fact that we need an integrated approach where crime is concerned. We've heard about this from analyst to analyst and over time now, and they've been saying this for years. So my question then is, are you saying that there's a failure at the top in government and on the part of your employees to institute this integrated approach to deal with the issue of crime? There are indeed the challenges of forming social compacts in different areas of development in South Africa. Crime being one of them, the economy being one of them. And in areas where these social compacts have succeeded, or working with communities who are starting to see results, you would see that in the recent past, General Mkwanazi in Guazulu Natal is doing extremely well working with communities in apprehending criminals. Here in, in, in Malatene, not less than two days ago, there are a number of, peoples who, of people who were apprehended and killed by the police because they were going to commit a crime and the tip off came from community members. So that social complex is very important. So if you are, and social compacting is not usually the only role of government. The government leads it, we have structures like NECLEC and others, but we do not at times succeed at the rate at which we want to succeed, but we are moving there. The other matter which I wanted to refer to was the issue of the debt to GDP ratio. You know in South Africa there's this neoliberal articulation that debt to GDP is a crime. If you look at the highest debt to GDP in the world, it's with Japan at 255% of their GDP. USA and UK have a debt to GDP ratio that is higher than ours. So at, at the center of the issue of debt to GDP ratio is that what do you borrow for? And we are of the firm view, if you look at our priorities as the ANC, to say we need to industrialize our economy to create work. If you are not borrowing for consumption, but for economic development, debt to GDP ratio is not a crime. So those are some of the things that you should look at fixing. The, then lastly, before I hand over, corruption. It was raised again, that repeatedly again and again. I, I, it's one of the issues again that says there is a problem of corruption in South Africa in the world. The problem of corruption, others will argue correctly that it is a problem that is inherent in the system of capitalism. And most important, and I want to give you a case in point. Yesterday, Corruption Watch reported to us that in municipalities, 71% of complaints that were received in relating to Corruption Watch come from the city of Cape Town, Swane and Johannesburg. Two of those are governed by the DA. So the narrative that says corruption is a problem of the ANC is false, it is not true, it is not supported by science, and most importantly, we will arrive at the wrong conclusion. Thank you very much. All right, before we go back then to the floor, Jane, do you want to respond to that? Yes, thank you very much, and uh, thank you once again. I'm going to start with the issue of corruption, because the rot of corruption has destroyed this province, and has destroyed this municipality, and has destroyed this country. Further down, if you read that report, if you are able to open and read it, it says those complaints come from the police. From the police. Most of the complaints came from the SFs. So now, if you look at handing over a complaint, or complaining for the sake of complaining, that report is measuring complaints, it's not measuring prosecutions, that this is where the city of Cape Town was found doing corruption. We can report a thousand cases just to create a narrative that this area is corrupt. We can send a thousand uh, complaints. So that is not true if you read that report. And also, I just want to say... But the complaints are still the complaints. Yes, they are complaints. So are you saying the complaints are not valid? 
hundred percent those complaints look at the areas where they're saying those complaints come from and um yes as we spoke about the issue of policing yes for the western cape as he said you can blame the city of cape town for the high Who crime rate power, though, in but, the western cape yes it's as that is what i'm saying you can blame them for the high crime rate but the the, the power the powers that be is in the hands of the ruling party to make that a, a happen that we can come up with all sorts of ideas we can we actually submit like we submitted a master plan to avert the situation of water right here in Emalakleni. 2008 the da submitted a master plan to deal with the infrastructure to deal with the water shortages but to this day we are still dealing with that so the da must still go to the minister Becky Kelly to say this is how we want to deal with the issue of crime this is how we want to deal with the corruption that's been reported at SEPs and he needs to act so we need to understand we cannot say death per GDP is not a crime you can't have 88 people being murdered in a country and say it's not a crime if we look at it it looks like we're living in a war zone 88 people get murdered in this country every day and you're going to tell us that is not a crime that is crime against humanity Oh. That is a clear crime and we cannot ignore that. And the minister, Becky Tele, is failing to do anything. That number keeps on increasing. The number of gender-based violence keeps on increasing. Oh. The number of people that violent crimes keep on increasing. Right. And you're going to tell us that it is not something that, you know, it's not a bad thing. No, it's people's lives. These are mothers and fathers. Their family members are reeling in pain because they're getting murdered every day in this country. All right, Jane, let's take more questions. I do understand we have some community members go ahead oh thank you very much uh, my name is uh, so I can call the member of the community from no port no my first first time I must appreciate SAFM for bringing the debate so that you bring the broadcasting to the communities if it belongs to the community thank you but then also appreciate all the panel or the political parties seated there one, let me ask a question to the, uh, the Inkata Freedom Fund, uh, uh, Fran, uh, Party. Why are there too much political killings where they are ruling, especially in KZN? And if they come to Mpumalang, how sure are we that we won't have hitmen that will kill fathers and mothers of the fathers? The second question goes to the Democratic Alliance. Why most of the white farmers, not all farmers, especially those affiliated to DA, killing black farm dwellers who are harmless, unarmed. For example, the coffin case, the DA was supporting the culprits. Now Truta in Delmas has, has poisoned plus 500 cattle of black people and killed Mr. Sachuayo and put an object in the private parts of his, his girlfriend who's still in ICU. I'm speaking of something that happened two weeks ago. The other one will go straight to the ANC. What is your plan on your road infrastructure as the ANC? The last one, to the economic freedom fighters. Uh, uh, Mdala Vernar, yours, I think we are fine. To the EFF. As you are a government in waiting, maybe you'll keep on working like Johnny Walker in Black Label. What, what, what is it that you, you, why do you want to vote to the South Africans while you are displaying egocentric arrogance and disrespect in a national TV where even members of the parliament are disrupting parliament? If people vote for you, won't you disrupt the local government or the provincial assembly than debating issues because all we are right. always disruptive. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. So you've got four questions then. Let's start with the IFP. Okay, let's give uh, the IFP a chance to respond. Thank you, Bongyo. Firstly, uh, I'm, I'm from Mkondo municipality here in Pumalang, where it's been on the news. There have been several killings, political killings within the ANC itself. That's the first thing I want to raise. Second thing, the political killings in Guazul Natal, the police services is under the ANC, from Minister Peggy Tele to the MEC of police in Guazul Natal to the, to the Commissioner of Police, whom the ANC spokesperson have just praised, General Mkwanazi. So it is their, it is their duty 
to, to investigate and apprehend people who are, who are responsible for the political killings. And when, since they failed to do that, when we, ta when we take over as, as IFP in Guazulu Natal, the first thing that we are going, we are going to do, we are, we are, we are going to de depoliticize uh, policies. Because the problem that is happening is that poli po police are politically affiliated. And that's why there's no proper investigation. And second thing, what we are going to do is that we are going to create a court, specialized court for certain crimes. For example, uh, gender-based violence, uh, political killings, uh, 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 and corruption. There are going to be specialized uh, uh, courts for those things. We are, going to, we are going also to improve the facilities and resources of the policies, of, of the police, like the forensic issues, because there's a backlog of it, and secondly, the infrastructure, the cars, and the police, the police remunerations, and the police, uh, right. police station sites. Okay. Thank you. Let's uh, move on then to the Democratic Alliance. Your question as well. <laughs> Jane? You had a question as well. The thank community you. member had a question to you. Yes, thank you very much. The question that was directed to the DA was a uh, farmer's apparently associated to the DA. There hasn't been a single case that has been proven that that there hasn't been a single oh, case that has been proven that it's a, that a DA member because he's saying DA members. So there hasn't been a single case that has been proven that a DA member has killed someone. He says so they were supporting let's look at the farmers. He yeah. says he says they were supporting, supporting. That, okay, that has also not been proven, by the way, that they are supporting the DA. So we need to work. I think what I like, so, what so I like Jane, about Jane, their leader, Jane. I yes. think if I'm interpreting your question correctly, so you were saying they were supporting in yeah, some of the yeah, cases. Yes. So some of the the DA supporters uh -huh. would be seen in those cases. Okay, the DA has never attended a court case where we are supporting someone that has murdered. We have never done that. As a matter of fact, where we attend, we attend on behalf of the victim. There was a case here in Middleburg. We called it the Coffin case. Yes. Many will remember. It. The first thing that the ruling party wrote was those people were members of the DA. Every time they find that they are not members of the DA, they get disappointed because they want to paint the DA in a particular light. Let me tell you what happened this week. A farmer, Joseph Shabangu, on Sunday murdered someone on his farm. Mr. Joseph Shab Shabangu is a farmer. He is a black farmer. And most leaders ran to Facebook and say a racist farmer has just killed a black man. When they found out Joseph Shabangu is a black farmer who actually shot a black man on Sunday this week in Delmas for uh, he said he was poaching in his farm. Then they are quiet. We need to understand why because you know when, when you're dividing the nation the DA is the only party with a track record of, in, of having members from all walks of life. But some people thrive on mobilizing on the basis of racial okay. hatred. Okay. Mr. Shavangu is a black farmer who on Sunday killed a black man. The right, DA Jane. value life. We need to value life. We mustn't look at okay, Jane. killing is wrong. It doesn't matter whether you're okay. black or white. Okay, Jane. Thank yes. you. Thank you for and that. We let's need move to on. talk factual. Okay, we Jane. Let's talk, move yeah, on. We yes. need to talk factual. Yes. And let's, yeah, I think, let's move on. I, I think when we talk just to arouse emotions, okay. it doesn't help. Let's we need try. to be factual. Thank you, Jane. Let's Thank try you. to get as many answers and questions as possible. Uh, Mahiro? Okay, you heard the, the, the question from the Thank community. you very much, Wongi. Once more, I'm very, very much... Aston Villa have found comfort on the top half and they want maximum points to retain their decent position. And this time, Daniolo is right. The equaliser belongs to Aston Villa. Yet the bees want to cause havoc and deprive the villains by restoring an away victory. We saw quite one of them in the first half. He finished it in the second and Brentford have turned this round. This is the Premier League. Catch the exciting clash between Aston Villa FC and Brentford FC on Saturday 6 April at 3 p.m. Live on SABC3. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proud to you on SABC Sport. For the love of the game. Unforgettable happens when the young and the old know they can surf, snorkel, fish, enjoy whale watching, and end the day with sundowners Nishisanyama. 
KwaZulu-Natal is a jaw waiting to happen. Zakipa. With hiking, horse riding, biking, zip lining and mountain biking adventures. Waiting for the fearless and the bold. Unforgettable happens here. Zwagana. Brought to you by Zulu-Natal. Bongi Zwane on SAFM. Babe, before we take some of the questions from the floor, Mahiro, you had a question from, the, um, from one of the community members who was saying that uh, you are very disruptive, and I'm, I'm, I'm repeating the question, the EFF is very disruptive, and how do they know for them as the community members that you are not going to be as disruptive in legislatures, in the National Assembly, should you be in charge? And I hope I did sum up your question correctly, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I think we have captured the question very clearly. Uh, I'm very much disappointed because this question is coming from someone who was led by the president and the commander-in-chief of the EFF when he was still the president of the ANC Youth League. I thought maybe he understands radicalism better than some of the comrades that are here. EFF is not disruptive. EFF is a radical and militant organization. Therefore, we have to be radical and militant in approach. Like, like, like Fidel Castro in Cuba said that revolution is not a bed of roses. If you are not being kind to us, how do you expect us to be kind to you? We are not disruptive. We are not anarchic. We are radical in our protest, the EFF. Thank you. He must go and read the teaching of Mikhail Pakunin of Germany about radicalism. Okay. ANC? I can proceed? Yes. No, thank you very much, uh, Bongiwe. Bongiwe, you know some organizations have made it a falsehood, a way of life. It is extremely shocking to hear that the DA is always on the side of victims when it is an open secret that they support the murderous regime of Israel, which continues to murder harmless and defenseless people in Palestine. That can never be on the side of the victims. But to get to the question which was posed to me about the road infrastructure, indeed, we agree that the road infrastructure is not at the state at which we want it to be. So the ANC government has been considering different uh, models to finance infrastructure. Because Bongiwe, the reality of the matter as it relates to infrastructure, we had a difficult choice to make between expanding infrastructure, in particular road infrastructure, to townships where there were not tarred roads before, and maintaining roads that were in town. In trying to expand to fulfill the promise of a better life for all, we did not have the sufficient resources or in hindsight neglected maintaining infrastructure. Hence, they have now dilapidated. But we have taken, since taken a decision to prioritize the maintenance of infrastructure. The second thing that we are considering is, is, is different funding models, like front loading. As we have seen in the Northern Cape, there was a project of, of, of financing infrastructure through front loading. And the last one, which is the most important one, it is to build the capacity of public works, in particular on maintenance. They must hire as many people as possible to do maintenance work right. and reduce tenders. Thank you very much. Let's move on then. Do we have a question for particularly the ATM as well as the ACDP? Yes, uh, Bongiwe, that's where we are. I'm with, the ACD, AS, AS, I'm with the ACDP. Apologies on the floor. Um, thank, you for, thank you very much. I'm Sipotwala, a member of the community in good standing. I've got a few questions uh, for the ACTP. Uh, number one, I, I want to find out um, in a community where gender-based violence is on the rise, and also we do not um, see that the perpetrators are being convicted and end up being jailed. What is the plan for the ACTP uh, with regards to our safety as community me me members? And also, what is the plan for the ACTP with regards to to young graduates who are uh, entrepreneurial, how are you going to assist them specifically in the ag specifically in, in, in the agriculture All right. and also in Let's move information on to the next and technology? Next question. Next question is for the ANC. Um, we want a date to the ANC as to when are we getting water in Siangoba? 
Okay. We do not have water. And just to assist him, he said he, he, he does not give half baked answers. So for us, a date will be sufficient. All right. And that date to, to advise them, it should not be post the elections because they won't be in power to effect that change. Thank you. All right. Uh, ACTP. Dr. Schultz. Thank you, ma'am. If we can respond to that question about safety, I think I would just like to, to start with a remark. For evil to flourish, good people must do nothing. If you want evil to flourish in South Africa and bad things to happen, good people must start doing something rather than nothing. And you know, if we look at the people, the ACDP says, the ACDP says, our people are the people of everybody in South Africa. We accept each and every person. Those are our people of South Africa. How are we going to deal with safety? First of all, safety is a major problem in South Africa. What will the ACDP do in response to the question? We will establish an independent, specialized anti-corruption entity with prosecutor-driven investigations, possibly even a new Chapter 9 anti-corruption institution, similar to the Scorpions, and we will start addressing the crime and the safety people. You know, I think we also need to look when we sit from the platform here, I can see your placards that says, Rescue South Africa, Help South Africa, SOS. The people are crying there is a problem, and this problem needs to be addressed. All right. We also want to ensure the slow recovery of tens of millions of rand that has been stolen, even if we have to go to the international courts to get that money back, we will do so. All right. We will review the parole system and deny bail for categories as crime such as murder, rape, and armed robbery and car hijacking, and we want order in South Africa. You know, people do what you allow them to do. When you create order, safety follows. We also want to do, we want to encourage ethical behavior by strengthening whistleblower protection. Okay, Dr. Schultz. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. We're just trying to move as fast as we possibly can. The ANC, very briefly, the dates at which water will be restored to Siangaba. We continue to expand water infrastructure throughout There's the no province. date. Yeah, no, at the present moment, I don't know the specific date about Siangaba because I can't come here and lie, but many communities in the province continue to benefit from access to water. Because you right. see, the problem is that we don't want adventurism. We do things in a planned manner. We are engaged at the present moment in IDP consultations, which is going to produce a program of action on when certain okay. communities will get water. All right. Um, to me, so let's move on then to the ATM. I do understand there's a question from the ATM. Yes, thanks, Bunk. We have got the ATM on the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I am Happy Kaza from the ATM, uh, a resident of the Amalashene community. Um, I have a question for, um, a comment actually for you, um, ANC. Um, Bill Gates says, your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. What have you learned in the past, I do not even want to refer to the past 30 years, because really a 30 year old is an adult. So really give me, as a teenager, what have you learned? Um, Emma Lacheni has two clinics that have not been fully functional. Previously, the clinics were running 24 hours, but currently they are not functioning. The crime rate in okay. Emalacheni has risen. What is ANC doing about that? All right. Sipo okay. in the clinic being one of them. And then and then Pumelelweni clinic okay, being one of them. Okay, let's keep it as brief as we possibly can. And then may I also have direct a question to our ATM? Um, how is ATM... Um, planning to improving the, empl the, the unemployment in South Africa. Thank All right. You. Let's give you a few seconds then to address that if you, um, when, when we're done with the ATM, uh, do me so if you want to respond to that. Um, yes, let's go, Kiriboni. Kiriboni, there was a question. Thank you. As ATM, 
we advocate for the local manufacturing of goods. How are we going to do that? Will you ensure that currently we've got a lot of factories that are being abandoned? For an example, we've got factories in Guandebele. There's a place called a magazine. Those factories are no longer existing. We've got factories in, in Standard 10 whereby they are, they are not working. So as ATM was saying, we need to open all those factories that are not working to ensure that the local citizens get employed. We've got a lot of people that are traveling, for an example, in Wandebele, who are tra using daily, who are traveling with an R573. Flo uh, they are flooding to Pretoria for employment. Whereas if we've got factories locally that we can ensure that they are, they are employing local citizens, then a lot of people will be employed. We've got malls currently. If you go to the existing malls, you'll find that the, 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 the goods that are being uh, sold there, they are made in China. For an example, here in, in, in Pumalanga, we've got a lot of, of forestries. How are we going to do We are even importing, we are importing toothpicks. Yeah. But we've got a lot of, 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 of uh, uh, forestries. We can't make in South Africa toothpicks, just an ordinary toothpick, candles and all that. But if we do that locally, it will ensure that a lot of people get employed. And when a lot of people get employed, there won't be corruption because all right. everyone will be employed. Okay. And we ensure that even... Okay, Kiriboni, thank you very much. We just have to keep the answers as brief as possible. All right, FF Plaza, do you understand there's a question? FF Plus? Thank, thanks, Bongiwi. I've got FF Plus right. on the floor. Thank you very much. The question I want to pose is to the Freedom Front, Mr. Werner Weber. Earlier you have referred to the government that ran out of money. Do you have any proof that the money is running out, that they actually banked her up. Thank you. Werner? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I, I can prove... Go ahead, go ahead. Let, let's try to give him a chance to respond. Werner? Okay, let's please settle down there at the back and uh, give Werner a chance to respond. Thank you. Werner? Uh, the, uh, we can hear you. Go ahead. No. The question is whether I can prove that the government is running out of cash. Yes, I can prove it. We have listened just now to the ANC saying that they are looking at other means to finance the road infrastructure. Why do you say that? Because you do not have the cash to repair the infrastructure. You do not have the cash. In Pumalanga, we've got the Puma, um, Kondo boarding school. At two occasions already, they have stopped building because they did not have the cash to continue. We were there. We, we are looking at the parliamentary village at Nelspruit. At two occasions, they had to stop because they did not have the cash to continue. We are looking, we're looking at the, uh, agri, uh, the, the uh, fresh produce market in, in Nelspruit. More than once they have stopped because they could not continue because of a lack of cash. Now I'm saying these are the first signs of a problem. You said it's not a crime to have a bad ratio between Beth, uh, debt and the GDP. Of course it's not a crime, but it's dangerous. It is dangerous if you are running, going to run into, if you are going to run into a cash constraint. What will you do? What will you do if the government runs out of cash and they, and they All right, can't, let's uh, try to keep it and down, they please. can't pay the grants anymore. What are you going to do? Okay, let's take a break and then we come back and uh, we get more questions from the floor. Star-crossed meetings between wild animals and people sometimes happen in...
which is training public servants on a daily basis in an effort to improve their capacity. Yeah. Two, in 2002, we issued what was called the professionalization of the public service framework, which is a framework that seeks to professionalize the public service and make sure that it is only a skilled workforce that makes it. Three, it, there's also a need to hire as many people as possible, in particular for works like maintenance and general works, which the public works has been able to do over years, and reduce our reliance on service providers. Right. We believe if we can get these three things working, state capacity will improve in South Africa and will be on track with our program okay. of building a developmental state. Let's take a question from the Democratic Alliance. Thank you, Bongi. Um, I'd like to ask the Democratic Alliance. Um, the ANC speaker said that we should work off official documents. In 2011, the SAHRC issued a report showing that what uh, Emma Lashleni's um, human rights were being violated through a lack of water. In 2024, in February this year, the, A the SAHRC issued a second report where it shows that the human rights of the residents of MNR Shleni are being further de eroded by um, the, the ANC government because there is even less water okay. available now than there was in 2011. And what has the DA done since 2011 and 2014 to fight for the rights to have water supply for the residents of Imlachini. Okay. I'd like to ask the ANC then a question. Okay. Um, <laughs> why, if we should have documents as to why, um, when we back up our information, why isn't he telling the speaker there from Siongorba that the latest document approved by the ANC controlled in Lashleni Municipality in November 2023 indicates that Siemkwaba will have water in 2030, okay. six years down the line. All right. Official documents. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Jane, quickly. Yes. I'll come Thank to you, Jane. I'm actually just now very much. Okay, I'll come to you just now. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Regarding the water, you know, uh, I was a councillor here in 2008 when we first filed our complaint regarding the water quality uh, with the Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. And that report said uh, the water is not suitable for human consumption. Mm -hmm. And we filed another report. When, when the report comes from Chapter 9 institutions, they are ignored by this municipality. We filed another one in 2010. This is accompanied by protests, is accompanied by pickets to say the water, there is a shortage of water and there's also the quality. Three times that the Human Rights Commission has ruled in favor of the DA to say the water is not suitable for human consumption okay. and ask the municipality to rectify that. The municipality has never done that. Hence, it's 2024, now the taps are dry, completely dry, as the DA has been in the forefront of saying the infrastructure is collapsing, the water quality is deteriorating. Today, when people drink the water in Emalakini, they either get sick, there's worms coming out of Georgia tanks, okay, Jane. Let's they get sick, to that or there is no water. They ignore the Human Rights Commission completely. Okay, Jane. They all right. ignore all Chapter 9 institutions' reports. Thank you, Jane, for that. Werner, let's take your answer. I, I would like to respond to... Uh, just a moment, please. I would like to respond to the accusation that was leveled against me and the white people that we stole the land. I, 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 want, I want to react to that. I want to react to that. I will tell you about the history of our poets. I want to tell you about the history of our poets. The whole of Mpumalanga, the whole of Mpumalanga, the whole of Mpumalanga was initially Swazi territory. It belonged to the Swazi people.
All right, let's try to just just move on a bit, uh, Vernon, so that we, we just wrap it up quickly. I was I was in I was in King Swati uh, King Swati the third in Swaziland. I was in his palace. All right, go ahead, Verna. I was I was in King Swati's palace, and and this this press statement was drafted in his Lusita palace. This statement was drafted in, in the king's palace, where it is said that the land was not stolen by the king of Mswati. He gave me this book, he gave me this book as a present. He signed for it. And it stated here that King Mswati I asked the white people to settle in Pumalanga. We were here because we were asked to be here. <laughs> All right, uh, Werner, let's take the ANC quickly, quickly before we give the closing remarks. Ask the answer to the DA. What was the question about the DA? The DA was asking that if you then are saying that they must go to official documents, how do you not know that the people of Seattle are going to only get water in 2030? So, the as I said earlier, that there is a process to make sure that the people of Sianova do get water. And information that has been brought to my attention is that working with Siriti, there is a plant which is about 5,000 5, or 500 megaliters that has been put in place to make sure that the people of Sianova get water. But what, we, what I was avoiding is to come here and be an adventurist and lie. The people of Sianova will get water. They must make sure that on the 29th of May, All they right. wake up to vote for the African National Congress so that they get water. Okay, so what's going to happen now, what's going to happen now is that I'm going to give each political party, and we start with the timers, and we've run out of time. So 30 seconds each for your closing remarks. I'll cut you off as soon as your time is up. So let's start with the clock. Dumiso? 30 seconds. I encourage all the people of South Africa, in particular those of Mpumalanga, to go out on the 29th, 29th of May to vote for the African National Congress to continue to grow the economy of the province, create jobs, and gender-based gender -based violence and crime. All right, let's move on. Moharek Mahiro, sorry. I also want to urge all eligible voters in South Africa to go out all our India numbers to vote for the EFF. The only only vehicle available to push the socialist agenda so that we can usher in socialist government on, on the 1st of June. Thank you. Cheng? If you want this criminal called ANC to be locked up, vote for the DA. If you want water out of your tap, vote for the DA. If you want to end load shedding, vote for the DA. If you want to shut corruption down, vote for the DA. If you want to shunt cadre deployment, vote for the DA. If you want employment in this country, vote for the DA. All right, come to your 30 seconds is up. Let's move on then. FF Plus is removing the selfish power hungry government and replaced with caring people centered government government with feel to ubuntu put south africa first not our bellies vote for atm on the 29th of may dr kuman yeah. The people of Mpumalanga, you deserve better, you deserve more. The IFP have a track record of service delivery. We have built a university in the deep rural areas of Wadlangezo, Ungoye. We have built a Mangosut University of Technology in Umlaz. Give us a chance. Give us a chance. Our Puma, Marcel, our Puma. All right, thank you so much. That wraps up our debate here from the Mpumala, from the Mpumalanga province, Emalateni Municipality Office. Thank you so much to the ANC, the EFF, the DA, FF Plus, ACDP, ATM, as well as the IFP. From us, thank you so much for joining us. See you again at the next debate, which we will have in Wazulu Natal. And it's back to you in studio. Eva Chipa is standing by with the latest news.